Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. We spend some of our time down in the weeds, looking at markets, understanding real estate metrics, comparing rents, and finding properties. But we also have to pull our heads up and focus on the big picture. Today, we're going to talk about macroeconomics and why you should care as a real estate investor. And we've got a great guest today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2021 Goals Retreat, January 8th to 10th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the live in-person 2021 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Joining me as usual, it's our financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. You know, we love real estate. We love the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs. We love getting into the weeds, but we also step back and look at the big picture from time to time. And I think that's super critical. So many real estate investors hunker down. They know their market. They know their team. They know, you know what properties are going to work. And you need to have that kind of knowledge. But we all swim in a big economic sea. And I think having an understanding of the bigger picture is going to pay dividends. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this the last 10 years for us since, well, actually 12, since 2008, uh, you know, getting blindsided, being in the mortgage business and seeing the macroeconomic picture forming on the horizon, hearing rumors, but not really paying any attention, thinking we were safely insulated. And all of a sudden, the mortgage-backed securities market blows up. The Fed comes out denying that it's going to spread uh, you know, across the economy. And it turns out to be the great financial crisis and the greatest financial depression uh, since the Great Depression, uh, notwithstanding whatever's coming. So we spent the last 10, 12 years really studying, trying to understand what happened, why it happened, how to be positioned in case it would ever happen again, and really how to see it coming a lot sooner. And that was both studying the mechanics of how things work, but also getting around people who were studying it from different perspectives and and getting that 360, I think that's really important. If you've read our most recent newsletter, you know, we've been doing a lot of uh, seminars and conferences, almost all virtually. Hopefully that's going to change a little bit in the coming months as we're doing some live events. But uh, we've brought on some big brains. It's awesome when you can hear other perspective and, and also when not everyone thinks exactly the same way. So it's perfectly okay to have some dissension as long as people can back up their position. And I think as real estate investors, we need to listen to all of it. We need to understand what's happening in the bond market and the stock market and precious metals and oil and gas, uh, not to get confused and not to burden your brain, but just to understand compared to what. We can argue for weeks, as I think our guests will be able to, that real estate is an amazing investment for all the wonderful reasons that you probably already know. But it's not the only investment. It's not the only choice that people make with their investment dollars. So having that understanding is going to be critical. And that's why we pull our heads out of the real estate sand from time to time and uh, talk broader picture economics. Today, we have a guest who thinks much the same way. He uh, has a successful business guy that got into real estate very strategically. And kind of like you, Russell Gray, has been really self-taught on the macroeconomics picture. Uh, he's got an amazing podcast. You're going to meet him when we come back. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Elms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Brad Sunrock, and over the past 19 years, I've helped thousands of people invest profitably in multifamily real estate. You see, I help people invest in large apartment buildings, both as active syndicators or passive investors. 
And in today's competitive and changing environment, it's even more important than ever to leverage an experienced mentor, invest in yourself and your ongoing education, and have a team of professional advisors that has nationwide relationships. And with the pandemic, it's even more critical now than ever before that investors understand where and how and what to invest in and what to avoid so that they can be successful. Learn how you can invest in apartments and get ready for the upcoming buying opportunity. Join Brad Sumrock on November 14th and 15th in person in Dallas, Texas, or via live stream from anywhere. Send an email to apartmentmastery at realestateguysradio.com for all the details. Find out where the real opportunities are in multifamily real estate now. Just send an email to apartmentmastery at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Hi, this is Peter Schiff, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com and your favorite podcast outlets. We're talking today about understanding the big picture, macroeconomics, what's going on in this financial sea we all swim in. And uh, we had an opportunity to uh, meet our next gentleman here recently, and he is blowing our minds with all kinds of great content and great ideas. Let's welcome The Real Estate Guys radio program, Mr. George Gammon. Hey, George, how are you? I'm excited. Extremely well, guys. Thanks for having me. Really looking forward to it. Absolutely. Us too. We've heard a lot of great things. Our mutual friend, Robert Kiyosaki, said you have to get this guy in your show. So that was kind of an order, <laughs> but uh, we're happy to do it. And, and I think one of the fascinating things, I think, to our listeners is kind of your story about how you got into real estate because you weren't always a real estate guy. Give us kind of the backstory, George. Oh, quite the contrary. I retired in 2012. And prior to retiring, I'd never owned a piece of real estate in my life, not even where I live. I always rented and just leased. And then in 2012, I knew that I needed to start managing my own money and figuring out how I could get a decent return. So I actually started studying guys like Milton Friedman and Thomas Sowell. And I bumped into them on a trip in, uh, to Singapore. I was at the Marina Bay Sands and had about an hour to blow before my dinner appointment. So ironically enough, I went to YouTube and found the Free to Choose series from Milton Friedman. And that took me down the rabbit hole and it just really resonated. So from there, I started studying investors like Peter Schiff and uh, Jim uh, Rickards and uh, Jim Rogers and Druckenmiller and Buffett and all the guys. And I really liked how Jim Rogers framed things. And he always tried to buy things when they're cheap and sell them when they're expensive. So I figured, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be like Jim Rogers when I grow up. <laughs> and he makes some pretty so, cool trips and some pretty cool cars too. Yeah, absolutely. And motorcycles. So yeah. I uh, happened to stumble across a chart of the real estate market in Japan going back to 1990. And then I layered that over a chart of the United States going back, uh, uh, inflation adjusted, going back to 1900. And this was 2012. So we were right kind of bottoming out on our historic trend line going back over 100 years. So I figured, okay, well, real estate might be cheap right now, quote unquote, and I get the cash flow cheap. So Let's just go ahead and dive right in. So I really got aggressive with it, put almost 100% of my net worth into real estate in 2012, going to tax auctions in the Midwest in Kansas City and buying them just literally right off the, the courthouse steps. And that was how I got into real estate. And I loved it. I enjoyed it. And so I kept doing it. And then I started transitioning to investing more overseas into South America, I found some opportunity there in a place called Medellin, Colombia, which most people 
only know from the TV show Narcos and Pablo Escobar. <laughs> but uh, it was it was kind of a macro play, interestingly enough, because oil was really cheap back then, got under 30 a barrel. So I wanted to go long oil. I didn't know anything about commodities, but I knew I understood real estate. So the Colombian peso loosely tied to oil. So I figured if I can buy real estate denominated in pesos, that's basically like going long oil. So that's why I started investing in, uh, in Medellin in 2015. We've been there ever since. Now I've got a team of about 20 or 30 people that do it full time for me. And then in 2019, we were doing all these remodels and the stuff that you see on the shows and that you guys talk about all the time. So I figured, well, why not turn it into a TV show because they're so popular in the state? So I pitched the local station. I somehow got them agree to agree to it, even though I didn't speak Spanish. And so we did a season of that. I had to produce the show. So I had to hire the editors and the camera people. And after the first season, there was a bit of a lag there before we were gonna start season two. I didn't want to you know, have them go work for someone else because I wanted to keep the team intact. So that's why I started the YouTube channel. And now the YouTube channel has, I think actually today we might hit 200,000 subscribers. So a little over a year we've been doing it and it's been a lot of fun and it's given me awesome opportunities to meet guys like you and Robert and to talk to all these people, all these great minds that understand not only real estate, but macroeconomics and investing. No, I love that story, George. I think sometimes people are at a disadvantage if they've grown up too close to real estate and you approached it as an outsider, but recognized pretty quickly, hey, there's some things here you need to know. There's some people I need to meet and figuring out a market is huge. I also think when you take a step into an international market, no matter where you invest, we have listeners, you know, more than 190 countries, wherever you invest, the minute you cross a border and invest, it changes a lot. There's a lot to learn, but there's also great opportunity. And uh, of course, what's also happened is as you've learned these things, you've been kind enough to share through your YouTube channel and your podcast, some of these macro ideas. In fact, you call yourself a macro addict. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, back in 2012, I just went down the rabbit hole and I've got one of those obsessive personalities for better or for worse. So if I get fixated on something, I mean, that's, that's just all I'm doing. It's like tunnel vision. And that's what happened to me with macroeconomics back in 2012. And I started listening to podcasts and audio books and just diving into it to where now, even today, if I'm in the shower or at lunch or whatever, I'm at the gym, I'm still listening to those podcasts and trying to learn more and more and more. It's just, I just enjoy it so much. And, you know, what's interesting when I first started that YouTube channel, I was talking about uh, real estate up front, but I was like, oh, man, I'm just so passionate about macro and I love real estate, but I just really love talking about macro and, and, uh, and investing in the, the bond market and the equities and the repo market and quantitative easing and the central banks and all these things. So I started doing a couple videos on that topic, thinking that nobody is ever going to listen to these crazy videos, some guy rambling on about the repo market. And sure enough, those were uh, the most popular. So, but still, I mean, even this morning uh, when I'm taking a shower, that's what I'm doing. I'm just listening to the most recent podcast uh, on you know, XYZ topic on macro. Love that. Love the fact that you're listening to a wide variety of voices and not just tunnel vision on real estate because there's so much to learn. But you take it to the next level in that you're teaching it. You're turning around and you're able to express that. And your videos are great. They're fun. They're educational. People are learning. And that's a real skill set, being able to communicate in such a way that other people get it. Yeah, but that's kind of a iteration type process. It's like throwing 10 things up against a wall and seeing what sticks. And a lot of it is just necessity in the sense that my most popular videos now are these whiteboard videos that you're referring to where I'll explain a certain process. Uh, I just got done with a whiteboard video explaining this uh, kind of this global reset that we're having from using LIBOR to a rate called SOFR, which is S-O-F-R. It's very esoteric, but uh, as you guys know, LIBOR, that affects all of us, uh, real estate investors, consumers, it doesn't matter who you are, you're affected heavily by LIBOR. And now that's going to change. And then the process of changing that from 2020 into 2021. So just kind of outlining that video. And I would try to do that just talking directly to the camera. And I was terrible. 
I couldn't do it. I was just absolutely horrible. So necessity is the mother of all invention, they say. So I'm like, well, man, I need some sort of prop because I suck so bad at doing it this other way. So I'll just get a whiteboard in here. <laughs> and then sure enough, the whiteboard videos were extremely popular. And now what I do is I'm just, whatever I'm thinking about at, at the moment, I'll try to explain it through a whiteboard video so I kind of can see it more clearly in my head. And then I can kind of go back and forth and figure out the probabilities of X, Y, Z playing out in the future so I can position myself accordingly. And hopefully that helps out a lot of other people be more prepared for whatever we're going to see in the future, which I think will be extremely volatile. Well, you know, podcasts are great because they're efficient. You can be listening while you're at the gym or driving and you've got a great podcast, but most people learn visually. And so having that tool where you can kind of tell the story and for folks that haven't seen your whiteboard videos, you usually have something up there already and you kind of take us through and it's it works. People get it. And some of these are pretty tough concepts that you're able to teach in a fairly short period of time. Yeah, I, I, I did one the other day when I was actually in St. Bart's on uh, how bank reserves and if, if bank reserves that the primary dealers have, if they can actually use those bank reserves to buy treasuries at auction and then flip them to the Fed. And so that's when that we hear the Fed monetizing the debt. And it sounds like a, a pretty easy thing to figure out. But, oh, my goodness gracious, I had to look into the Federal Reserve Act and go through it with a fine tooth comb. And still, there's a lot of gray area there. You really don't know if they can use those bank reserves to buy financial assets. Uh, we pretty much all agree that they can't use those bank reserves to buy goods and services in the real economy. But can banks use them to buy um, you know, mortgage-backed securities from other banks? There's all these questions. And when you get into the plumbing of the dollar funding markets, it gets very, very complex, very, very quick. <laughs> but it's fun for me. I, I just love trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah, it, it is. You know, it's designed, I think, on purpose, not to get my tinfoil hat on, but to be a little bit confusing. You ask 100 people off the street what the Federal Reserve is and 99 get it wrong. But it's not that complicated once you spend time. It just takes that time. And I know you're getting around people that help and have these ideas and have come to these same places. And that creates this kind of community aspect, which I think is important. You know, it's a big world and nobody has the corner on all the answers. So when you can take information from different sources and be able to put that in a way that people can relate to it, that's the other thing is it has to be interesting enough for people to want to watch. Yeah, and it goes back to terminology as well. Once you understand that the basic concepts and the terminology, the language used, then it's then it's a lot easier to understand. But I try to use a lot of editing and I, I try to, I mean, it's just kind of my own personality. A lot of times it's politically incorrect, but I just kind of throw it out there. And I think sometimes it makes a little, it makes it easier to digest. I'll use a lot of stick figures just because I'm, I, I can't draw at all. <laughs> and it's just kind of take on, it takes on a life of its own. And I think, but I, I have to give a lot of credit to the editors because I can sit there and explain something on a whiteboard, but the editors make the, the graphics move. They make the treasuries move from, you know, the commercial banking system's balance sheet to the Fed's balance sheet as I'm explaining it. And, and I think that makes it much easier to understand when you're not only hearing it, but you're seeing those visuals. That's such a great point. It totally reinforces the learning process. So you're a guy that went out there and figured a lot of this out, and now you're sharing these ideas. Here we are, you know, post uh, the discovery of COVID and various levels of lockdown and, and things. Right now, real estate investors are listening. What do you think are some of the most important things people should be paying attention to? As a real estate investor specifically, I think the debt. It's interesting. When I got into the game back in 2012, I was just focused on the underlying asset and the cash flow. That's really, you know, you've got the debt component there, but the interest rates weren't dramatically different than what they had been for the last, let's say, 10 years or so. And, but, and now, obviously, mortgage rates have really come down, especially on a 30-year fixed rate loan. And then also back then, I, I didn't really have a strong opinion on whether we were going to get deflation or inflation. And as you guys know, if you've got a lot of debt, you're gonna you're gonna want that inflation. If you get deflation, that that'll be a little uh, that might not be so good. But now I think we're in a, a different economic environment where I think as a real estate investor, the debt is almost a, a better asset than the underlying real estate. 
in the standpoint, especially if you got 30 year fixed rate, because you're going to be able to pocket the spread as far as purchasing power from your interest rate versus the, the rate of inflation. So if the rate of inflation is running at 10% and you're locking in a 30 year mortgage at three, that delta of 7% is going to be a transfer of wealth from the bank to you. And if you kind of calculate that, I think that you might make more money on the debt, or I shouldn't say more money, you're gonna potentially increase your purchasing power greater through the debt than by actually owning the underlying real estate. Because the real estate right now, if you're just hyper-focused on the United States, in a lot of markets, it's very expensive, super expensive. In fact, even, even when you adjust for inflation, it's higher than it was in 2006. Right. So then you have to, you know, then the next question becomes, okay, are we in a bubble? Well, I mean, just to keep it as easy as possible, well, if prices adjusted for inflation are higher than they were in 2006, when we were definitely in a bubble, then it would lead you to believe that today we are also in a bubble. But it, it's weird because it doesn't necessarily say that you, or it doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't be out there looking and kicking tires for potential opportunities because of that fixed rate debt. It's just, you've got to be hyper-focused on the cash flow. You got to have positive cash flow, that's for sure. Uh, you can't have any of these negative carries that you get in California or something like that. But as long as you got great positive cash flow and you can lock in that cheap debt and your game plan is long-term, well, I mean, does it matter if the asset goes down in nominal price or even adjusted for inflation by 10 or 20%, you don't care because you're not selling. And so it, it really depends. But for, for just your average Joe, I would say, well, you might want to kind of shy away from real estate right now because it's super, super expensive. And I think that we're most likely in a bubble in a lot of markets. But for a sophisticated real estate investor, I still think there's some opportunities there if you really understand the leverage component of it. Such a good point. Most people, especially when they're starting out as real estate investors, they focus on price and they're gonna focus on rents. And if they're smart, they'll do their due diligence, their market analysis, find markets that are you know, more landlord friendly and that yeah. there's a good durability of income. But the debt piece, you just kind of assume that, hey, whatever today's rates are, they are. Here we are at historic lows. It's one of the reasons that Robert Kiyosaki loves real estate isn't for the real estate, it's because he can short the dollar right. with debt. And when you can acquire loans like you can today, it doesn't mean you want to be at the top of the market buying, but certainly it should affect your thinking. Yeah. And also people need to realize that the real estate is a very inefficient market. And that's one of the greatest benefits. Like gold, let's take that as an example. If gold is trading at $2,000 an ounce, you can't find someone that'll sell it to you at $1,500. But real estate's different. Right. You can, if you find a super motivated seller that has, let's say, a property for 200000 that's worth that, if they had six months to sell, let's say they need the liquidity right away, you might be able to get it for 150 or 175 And then you take it to an extreme when you go overseas and markets that don't have an MLS and that they don't have this infrastructure for selling real estate then it's even more inefficient and the variables are even greater and therefore the opportunity is greater if you know what you're doing. And it, the more inefficiencies you get in the market, the, the more that is in favor of the expert and the beginner is most likely going to get their, their, their butt handed to them, <laughs> most likely going to lose money. But if you really know what you're doing, if you've done the boots on the ground research and you have that level of expertise, then your, your, your margins are just going to be through the roof. And it presents just a really neat, neat opportunity with a lot of upside. That's why I started, or one of the main reasons why I started looking overseas in the first place, because I'm always looking for a market that's even more inefficient. You know, that's a point that not a lot of folks really understand. I'm glad you brought it up because it is that very inefficiency that creates opportunity. You have folks that are just don't wanters for whatever their situation was. I was sitting in a real estate office in another country talking to a broker and a guy walked in and said, I need to sell my house. Okay, well, in any place in the world where a real estate broker has an office, they, they love that, right? Walk in traffic. And so the broker, you know, excused himself and started talking to him about what the market was like. And the guy was like, well, no, no, I, I don't want to list my house. I, I want to sell it like, like today. <laughs> so this guy literally was in a 
crunch for money. And because it was another inefficient international market, there wasn't, a, you know, a, a time, time was the constraint. Yeah. And so the broker got himself a deal. You know, we'd be disclosing that and so forth. And it's probably not good to take advantage of somebody, but it solved both problems. The guy needed cash today for his real estate. One of the challenges of real estate investing is the illiquidity. So you take illiquidity on one side and inefficiency on the other, and there are some opportunities that not everyone's going to see. That's right. That's right. And you just got to be, you got to have your eyes open. And then you also have to be good at negotiation. And uh, I had a story very similar to that. The last property I bought in Medellin, where um, I think they just had a sign up in the window. I mean, that, as you guys know, in South America, that's typically how they sell things is they don't really put it online. It's just you got to walk around and look for for sale signs. If it makes it online, that means it's not what you want. They had way too much time. They put a website up. It should have been sold. Yeah, exactly. Or it's overpriced. So you're kind of just walking around, just walking for dollars, not even driving for dollars. And then you're like, oh, look at that sign. I like that building. So you go check it out. And then you call the real estate agent. We did a, a tour of it. And of course, my first question is always, well, why are they selling? As you guys know, it just will blow your mind what real estate uh, agents will actually tell you, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, they're, they're in debt up to their eyeballs and they've got all these problems and they've got to sell and it's been on the market for six months and they're just desperate right now. They'll take anything. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you should have told me that, but uh, that's why I like to open up dialogue and ask. Right. So once I knew that, then I came in and I gave them an offer, which was, I don't know, maybe 60% of what they were asking. And they came right back like a half hour later with a counter. It was very close to my original offer. I just bumped up a bit and bam, I got it. And uh, as you guys know, you always make money on the buy side. And uh, that's a great example of these people that were just, they needed to sell. There's no liquidity in the market. You've got the cash. It solves both problems. And you just got a, a huge equity gain in a property that you can just sit on. You don't even have to remodel it. And you can make a ton of money just by cash flowing it or flipping it six months or a year from now when another buyer comes along that's willing to pay retail. But for that property in particular, I, I went ahead and remodeled it. We'll keep that in rental portfolio. Our guest today is George Gammon. We're talking about the macro picture and also real estate distinctions. We'll have more from George when we come back. We'll also play real estate trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Hear ye, hear ye. Registration is now open for the Real Estate Guys 19th Annual Investor Summit. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning this year, our sales legend, Tom Hopkins, the editor of the Gold Newsletter, Brian London, international real estate developer, Beth Clifford, and Jim Rohn's 18-year business partner, Kyle Wilson. And joining us live and in person for his 9th Investor Summit, Peter Schiff. Plus, returning for his 9th Investor Summit, best-selling author, and the Rich Dad Advisor for Real Estate, Ken McElroy. Plus, lots more to be announced. It all begins June 11th in beautiful Belize. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to reserve your spot. This transformational week is like no conference you've ever attended. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys, Peter Schiff, Ken McElroy, and an all-star faculty on the 19th Annual Investor Summit. Don't be like Charlie, who scans the internet for IRA information, often getting bad information from copycats who have no idea what they're doing. You deserve to work with a reputable firm that specializes in one thing, the EQRP. Lucky for you, Congress just made it possible for you to get up to $200,000 out of your current 401k or TSP, so you can invest that money in real estate or even your own business. Even if you're still working, it's possible to get access to all this money tax-free. Whether you're a full-time investor, a doctor, or a government employee, even if you have employees, the EQRP is your secret weapon. You'll never see this strategy in Money Magazine, only here with the Real Estate Guys. Every major accounting firm in America is quietly sharing this strategy with their wealthy clients, helping them get their funds freed from 401k jail. Hi, I'm Damian Lupo, and we have your solution. With the CARES Act expiring soon, this strategy will be gone forever. The EQRP company is ready to help you unleash your retirement funds now. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report today. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, David Stockman. Uh, I'm the author of the Contra Corner blog, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio show. Thanks for tuning into the program today. If you want to get more out of life than you ever thought possible, join us for Create Your Future, the 2021 Goals Retreat. It happens January 8th through 10th, live in Lake Las Vegas. Get all the details at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking today about the macroeconomic picture, what that means to real estate investors and how you can pay attention. Before we get back to an interview with George Gammon, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia. That's your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question. It has something to do with the region of the world that George was just talking about. When you hear the question and think you know the answer or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address. The first person with the right guess gets an amazing book called Purpose, Passion, and Profit, written by a collection of inspiring authors. That could be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week, it was Halloween Horror Stories, always a fun and educational show. We ask this, where was candy corn invented? Well, it turns out candy corn was invented by George Renegar, a candy maker at the Wonderlull Candy Company of Philadelphia. Candy corn was originally called buttercream candy and chicken feed because corn was commonly used as food for livestock. In fact, originally it came with a rooster on the candy boxes. So Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is the answer. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. George was talking about Columbia. Turns out Columbia is the world's leading producer of a precious stone. Which one? Yes, for which precious stone does Columbia lead production all over the world? If you know or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your name, the answer to the question, and your physical mailing address. The first person that gets it right gets this great book, Purpose, Passion, and Profit. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking about the macroeconomic picture and some distinctions we can learn as real estate investors looking for clues. George Gammon is our guest, and George has an awesome podcast called The Rebel Capitalist Show. Tell us about that, George. Tell us about your podcast. Well, it's just interviews that I do with pretty much all of our favorites on my YouTube channel, guys like Peter Schiff, uh, Rick Rule, Doug Casey, uh, Brent Johnson, Luke Groman, Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> it's all these people that I really enjoyed listening to since 2012. Now it's just amazing to have the opportunity to interview them and really be able to ask my own questions. And uh, what we do is we just take the audio from those YouTube interviews and that's the podcast, the, the Rebel Capitalist Show. And it was just kind of an afterthought and just every maybe two months or so, I'll have my assistant say, well, what, what are the numbers? What are the downloads on those things? And every time she gives me the new download numbers, I'm just completely like blown away. I, I can't believe it how fast it's actually grown and continues to grow. So I'm really excited about that as well. Well, it's awesome. If you're doing good work, people will find it and people will tell a friend and we very much have pass along rate when it comes to great shows and great ideas. And I know that's happening on your YouTube channel as well. So uh, folks can uh, certainly check out the podcast if you're a podcast addict, awesome. But take some time and, and peruse the videos. You've got a bunch of great stuff up there. You know, George, we're here at an interesting time. You talked about the bubble when you started investing in 2012 in high hindsight, that was a pretty good time, right? Folks that invested in 2012, 13, 14, that was a pretty good time. Now we could say, well, we're at the top and near the top, if not at the top, not every market, not every type of real estate. But what are the things you're watching today as you try to pick markets and properties that make sense? I always start from the standpoint of asking myself if it's cheap or if it's expensive. And if it's cheap, I want to buy it. If it's expensive, I want to sell it. And I know a lot of people get really focused on the direction of the price and they ignore the value. And I think that's a huge mistake. I think that's the biggest mistake people make. On the comments on my YouTube channel and emails that I get constantly or on Twitter, it's always, well, where do you think the price of real estate's going? You know, do, we, do you think we're at the top? Do you think we're at the bottom? Or do you think I should sell my condo in Toronto? I think that the prices are still gonna go up over the next couple of years. I'm saying, listen, I don't know what the prices are going to do in Toronto, but I know it's not cheap. And if it's not cheap, if it's expensive, I'd sell. Well, what if I miss out on all these gains? Or 
Well, that's not the point. The, the point is, as long as you stick by the rules, if you do that long term, you're going to come out ahead. That's your edge, right? So as an example, back in 2012, I started buying real estate because it was cheap, but I started selling just gradually. I still own a lot in the United States, but I started gradually selling in 2018. Now, I had no clue if the market was going to go or continue to go up. In fact, I can give you a great argument, a bullish argument for real estate in the United States. Uh, I can give you a very convincing argument, but it could double, it could triple, it could quadruple. Who knows? But I'm very, very happy to sell now because even if I miss the top, I don't care. I'm selling it when it's expensive. And then I just look for the next asset class or the next area where you can buy it cheap and you just do the same things. You don't try to pick the top and bottom and you don't worry about the price direction. Another example is back in March, you know, oil was crashing and uh, I went in and I bought a lot of the producers of some of these commodities like oil and coal and uranium. And uh, back then I was under the opinion that oil would go down even further which it actually did, you know, you guess what went down to negative $40 a barrel for, for, for some market. That's down pretty far. It's hard to get your mind around that, but it happened. Yeah, but my, my point is I started buying those producers, not because I thought we were at the bottom and, okay, this is it, oil's, this is as low as oil's gonna go. I thought it was going lower, but I started buying because it was cheap. And then I won't sell it until it gets over probably $80 a barrel because at that time, based on my charts that are adjusted for inflation, going back as far as I can, I can go, that's when it starts to get expensive. So that's kind of my, my framework. I just try to keep it simple. And it sounds easy, and it is, but for most people to, to execute, it's very difficult for them to get into that mindset for some reason. Well, I think we're our own worst enemy. Well, absolutely. People overanalyze, overthink, and uh, I love boiling it down to the pretty simple, right? How well is it priced and, and the value? And there's other considerations like how long you're going to hold a property. If you're a collector of real estate and you're planning to have it in your portfolio a long time, you might look at it differently. You know, you mentioned your television show, which is you know, the, the flipping show, local show uh, in that down there. And, and I think uh, you've done a lot of that. You've done a lot of buying, improving, and selling. And when you do that kind of a process in real estate, we did a show, we're not really flippers, but we did a show on, on real estate flipping a few weeks back, uh, then you really have to pay attention. As you said, you make the money when you buy and you have to understand value. And if you're going to be in and out in a relatively short period of time, that looks different than if you're planning to hang on for a decade. Yeah. And I see that more as a business. I see that more as a, as a side or not maybe a side hustle, but a, a small business that's kind of more entrepreneurial where I think investors if you're looking at that, you're, it's kind of rental properties. You, you might do some improvements and whatnot or change the use case on the property, but it's more of a, a long-term hold. If a, Like the team that I have in Medellin, I, I would consider that a small business. You've got a team of, of 20 or, or 30 people that are down there doing it. You know, you've got architects, you've got a general contractor, you've got a designer, you've got all your subs, you've got, it's just, and once you, you sometime I'll keep it in rental portfolio, but if you're just buying and then as soon as you get done, you're furnishing it, staging it, and then putting it on the market and then taking that money and parlaying it into the next project, the next project, I, again, I, I see that as a business where, so I kind of, I, I need to compartmentalize those things. And a lot of times I talk about one and it, it kind of bleeds over into the other thing, but I, I need to distinguish between the two. It's a great distinction. We talk about that all the time on our show, that flipping is not investing. It, it is a business. It, it's a job. Right. It can be a great job. You can make a lot of money, but it's not the same as producing and holding on to assets that continue to grow in value, provide cash flow. And as you said, you've got to have cash flow. And that's one of the things that it can be difficult in these times, right? We've got businesses that are closing. We've got jobs, layoffs, all those things. And we're testing some of the durability of that uh, real estate income. But back to your point, 
price can can help you decide a lot of things. So you've had now some experience and have gone from knowing not much uh, to knowing a ton about real estate in the real world from having done it. What advice might you have, George, for someone who's just starting out? We get a lot of folks listen to our program. They've never bought real estate, kind of like where you were in 2012. They're not sure where to start. Uh, looking back, uh, if you could go back and tell 2012, George, hey, here's what I would do. God, give us some thoughts there. I think they should study wholesaling because uh, even if they're an investor, they want to do this as a business, however you want to do it, you're, you're going to make money on the buy side. And not that you want to be a wholesaler, but if you can understand how they do, understand how they find deals, understand how they find motivated sellers, you're going to be way ahead of the game as a real estate investor or a real estate business, whatever you want to do in the genre. That's that, And then for the, the average person out there that might not want to be a, a quote unquote real estate investor. I think they've got to look at the mortgage on their house and make sure that it's a fixed rate mortgage, a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. I think the, that and own some precious metals is the best thing a, a, a normie could do right now. <laughs> Love that. And, uh, you know, like you, we've uh, studied other asset classes and we think you need to have a, a broader uh, education there. So certainly paying attention to folks that are getting their mind around this is important. Um, but give us your thought on where do precious metals belong in an investor's portfolio? I think two, two sides there. With my portfolio, I like to break it down into three categories. You've got insurance, investments, and speculations. So the insurance would just be physical gold. I'm not buying it to get rich, just stay rich. You're just buying it to maintain your purchasing power. As far as the investments, I would define that as something that has to pay me to own it. Obviously, rental properties or dividend paying stocks, perfect for that. And then the speculation, I'm really just seeing a lot of asymmetry. So the gold miners, they might not pay me to own them, but I see a lot of asymmetry there. I would even put silver into that category. I'd put Bitcoin in that category. I'd put uranium into the category as well. And for real estate investors, one thing that I would encourage them to do is, is pay more attention to commodities because at the end of the day, all you're doing with a, a house is, is you're buying commodities. You're just buying commodities that have kind of been, been put together. So pay attention to the price of lumber. You know, lumber has gone up, what, it's like tripled or quadrupled in the last maybe uh, four or five months since we'd have this issue with the supply shock with COVID. And I think that real estate investors need to pay attention to that. Why? Because that's going to really trickle down into the construction costs. So if construction costs right now are 150 a square foot, well, you can see that coming down the pipeline that they're probably going up to 175 or 200. They're probably going up in your local area. And as, as we all know, we wanna buy under the cost of construction. So that should factor into your decision-making process. Pay, pay attention to commodities. And then on the for the investors listening, I think that's the only thing that's cheap right now. We say we're in the everything bubble and we are in the everything bubble to a certain extent, but there are a couple things out there that are cheap and commodities fall into that category. Commodities relative to the stock market haven't been this cheap going all the way back to 1900. They're at an all time low for the last 100 plus years. So I, I'm, I'm very bullish on commodities over the long term because I think we're going to get some stagflation in the next few years as well. All right, good stuff. Well, this has been a fascinating conversation. Glad we got to spend some time together. George has a great YouTube channel with all kinds of fun stuff, plus, of course, the podcast. So you, if you're not subscribed, you want to do that right away. Uh, we will look forward to uh, picking this conversation up next time. George, thanks so much for being on the program. Thank you for having me. There's George Gammon. More when we come back, you're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Elms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Real Estate Guys listeners, are you tired of losing real estate deals due to financing issues? Have you had enough of waiting on banks, lenders, and investor groups to fund new projects? What if there were a way to eliminate all the hassle and invest in real estate on your own terms? I'm here to tell you there is. Patrick Donahoe here from Paradigm Life. I'm an Investopedia top 100 most influential financial advisor, and I recently wrote a best-selling book about the financial strategy that changed my entire investment model, and the one that could change yours. To get a copy of my book for free, 
and learn how you can maximize your real estate portfolio by acting as your own bank, send an email to mybank at realestateguysradio.com. Don't make another real estate deal without reading my book first. Email mybank at realestateguysradio.com now to get your copy for free. In uncertain times like this, it's great to know there are two things you can always count on. High demand for affordable single family homes to live in and Terry Kerr's amazing Memphis team at Mid-South Home Buyers to find, fix, and manage the next addition to your recession-resistant real estate portfolio. The Memphis market is logistics and distribution dynamo with an economic engine that's essential to moving goods and critical supplies all over the United States. Quality rehab, proven profitable property management, affordable rents, and solid ROI make turnkey property investing through Terry's team a dream when it matters most. To learn more about Memphis and Mid-South Home Buyers, send an email to midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. That's midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, I'm G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, a second look at the Federal Reserve. And you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. If you ever wanted to do bigger deals using other people's money, or if you'd like to invest passively coming out to the secrets of successful syndication, our two-day workshop on real estate syndication, putting together bigger deals. It happens in March in beautiful Dallas, Texas. All the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking today about uh, the bigger picture. You definitely want to spend time taking your head out of the sand and looking at what's going on and fascinating to get to hear from George Gammon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm actually quite excited about it because there were so many great lessons. You know, I love studying successful people. And of course, the older I get, the, the more of those successful people are younger than me. And I'm always so enamored of people that figure things out soon, right? I had a friend once tell me, you know, everybody figures it out, but the great ones figure it out early, you know? So he's a younger guy, retired. And, and what I love about the story is that when he retired, rather than just turn his money over to a wealth manager, you know, invest and forget, he took personal responsibility. He said, okay, now that I've retired, I've made it in business, and I've had this uh, equity experience, and I've got a bunch of money. Now I have to take personal responsibility for understanding how to invest it. I need to take personal responsibility. And what he did is he went and looked for role models. I heard him talk about Jim Rogers, and then reminded me of my father. When my father was a young entrepreneur, he went out to learn how to start a business. He read a couple of books on how to write a business plan, and he stopped reading, and he started doing. He wrote a business plan and raised the money and did it. And I, I thought that that was a really cool thing that came out of that because, you know, at the end of the day, knowing is interesting, but taking action. We say all the time, the motto of the show, education for effective action. And I think that when you get an environment like we have right now, where there's a lot of information coming at you, a lot of different opinions. I mean, just coming from these last two events we've been at you got people that don't agree and they're smart people and they're qualified to have an opinion. At some point, you have to make a decision. You have to say, yeah, this is what makes sense to me. I've done my homework. I'm ready to go out in the real world and put my theory, my belief to the test. And of course, you have to do it smartly so that no one investment, no one decision takes you out, but you learn by doing. Well, I think there's lots to glean from George's story too. One of the things that impressed me is the fact that when he decided to get into real estate, he didn't just, you know, think he was the smartest guy in the room. He was humble about it. He sought out uh, teachers and places, voices, you know, and, and got his mind around it. And you got to spend some time figuring it out. I mean, I'm all for the person that has a propensity to action. As uh, we heard last week on Halloween Horror Stories, that doesn't always turn out so well, but you get the lesson and you learn when it costs you money. The great news is you can also learn vicariously through people. So being open-minded enough and recognizing you don't know it all is a great character trait for success. And then the other thing is just taking the time to share it. And that part is always impressive to me. There's a lot of folks that have a lot of knowledge. They keep it to themselves. They become wealthy. That's all good. No problem with that. But when you have a gift to teach... When you have the ability to take these complex ideas and explain them in a way that other folks can understand, then you kind of make the world a better place if you'll do that. Well, I think there's two parts to that because this is how I am. I mean, first of all, uh, from a selfish standpoint, if, if you will, or enlightened self-interest, you learn by teaching. 
And when you put yourself out there, I mean, and you're interviewing smart people and you're presenting to smart people. I remember the first time I had to present in front of Robert Kiyosaki. That was intimidating, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting on a panel with G. Edward Griffin and Robert Kiyosaki to talk about the Federal Reserve. That was intimidating. And, but it forces you to study. It forces you to ask questions. It forces you to connect the dots. And then if you're a true student, if you really love learning, you get so excited about it, you want to share it. And so it's kind of this, it, it is like maybe Ayn Rand would call it the virtue of selfishness, but, but you really do cement your own education when you put yourself out there and you talk to smart people. And instead of just being a wallflower, you actually engage in the conversation. I remember the first time you sat me at dinner with Peter Schiff, uh, Mark Skousen, and Bob Murphy. These guys are all brilliant economists. And there I am, this you know self-studied guy. And I was very early in the learning curve. But then I started having those conversations. Of course, my epic conversation way back when with Richard Duncan, you know, where I asked him a question and he goes, Oh, that's a good point. You know, the, wow, I made a good point to a PhD economist that used to advise the IMF. But that's putting yourself out there and taking those risks. So it's not just financial risk that it takes to be a great investor, but it's also some intellectual risks that you have to take if you really want to fine tune your, your thinking and your skill set. Absolutely. So thrilled to have George in the program. You can find out more about what he does. Easy to find George Gammon on YouTube, and you should, because he's got a lot of fun videos and a wide variety of topics, some in real estate, uh, some in the macro picture, because he's a macro addict. Hey, if you want to hang out with a bunch of cool people and get sat at dinner, with people like Russ just talked about, well, then you need to come to the 19th Annual Investor Summit. It's the biggest event we do of the year. It's happening in June of 2021. You can get all the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com. Just click the button that says Summit. It's going to be extraordinary. Yes, it is. And, you know, it goes back to this idea that when you put yourself in a room full of great people uh, and then you're willing to engage, it pulls you up. And then one day you wake up and you realize there's people in the room that are behind you and now you're kind of middle of the pack and you have something to offer. And I always try to be in rooms like that, you know, where I bring something to the room, but where the room pulls me up. And it's a challenge, you know, the more you advance, you want to continue to try and stretch yourself in that way. And that's why when I got a chance to meet George, I said, oh, this is great. I'm going to I'm going to go see this guy. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to use the show as a way to get into a conversation with him, just the way he uses his show. I mean, and that's a great thing. I mean, we live in a, in a time in history where really anybody who wants to put the work in can put themselves in the position that we're in, that he's in, that a lot of people are, are getting into, uh, where they take what they know, they share, they learn, and then they build a brand for themselves. And one day they wake up and they've got great relationships, great connections, great understanding and access to opportunities that other people on the outside looking in, you know, don't have. But it's for everybody. Every couple of months, we do an Ask the Guys program where we answer your questions. If you've got a question for the Real Estate Guys, well, it's time to start submitting your questions for the next episode. Just go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click the button that says Ask the Guys. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys radio show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.